a violent scene captured only in photographs. Police and civilians battling on the streets in the southern port city of Kaohsiung. But it didn't start out this way. On December 10, 1979, thousands of people marched through the city to celebrate Human Rights Day. They're also driven by a strong desire for political change. What they don't know is that they're setting in motion a series of events that will lead to democracy in Taiwan. The demonstration begins as a peaceful one, but it's met with state violence. Military police in full riot gear intercept the marchers. They toss tear gas into the crowds and beat them back. But then as we came back almost to the one block away from the, um, from the headquarters, there was this group of about 30 uh, riot police, but they had electric batons. So I, I have this rather vivid image of them with their electric cattle prods. So how does a peaceful march end in violence? There are multiple factors. The U.S. has just cut diplomatic ties with Taiwan in favor of the People's Republic of China. President Jiang Jingguo has just suspended all elections. He's worried that his party, the Kuomintang, or KMT's authoritarian grip on power is slipping. And at the same time, Taiwan's opposition movement is growing in both strength and size. They call themselves the Wai, literally meaning from outside the ruling party. It's a movement driven by a handful of bright, young, pro-democracy activists. They can't run for office, so instead, they set up a political publication to spread their message. They call it Formosa Magazine. Many of the magazine's founders go on to become the first leaders of what is now Taiwan's ruling party, the Democratic Progressive Party. They include a cabinet official, Chen Ju, former Vice President Annette Liu, and former lawmakers Shi Mingde and Yao Jiawen. By the time of the December 10th protest, Formosa magazine is selling upwards of 100,000 copies for each issue. This rattles the KMT, which sees the Dang Wai and its publication as a serious challenge to their rule. The government begins to crack down. It was pretty much to the point that if the KMT renewed the elections, the opposition was, pretty, was on a roll they would have done very well and pushed further and pushed further for the end of martial law. The end of martial law would have brought down the KMT. This is where most of the action that night took place. But if you came here today, you might never know what had happened. The magazine's former office now stands empty, and there's not much around to tell you that this was the backdrop to a pivotal moment in Taiwan's history. Today, a powerful reminder of the Formosa incident is on display about 350 kilometers away at the Jingmei Human Rights Memorial Park in New Taipei. This is where the Kaohsiung Eight, the six men and two women who were charged with inciting the unrest, were tried and sentenced to prison. It also contains the cells where the eight were detained. The park and its facilities are a testament to how much Taiwan's pro-democracy activists sacrificed to achieve their goals, and how effective their struggle would be. At that time, it was very traumatic. It was quite traumatic, depressing, and it wasn't really until about two years later that we realized that it had made a considerable break breakthrough. That it did, that the democratic movement kept going. Interest in the park has risen since U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited in August.
while the memorial recalls a dark part of Taiwan's history, it also stands as a symbol of hope, a defining image of the country's fight for its democracy. Patrick Chen, Klein Wong, Eric Tsai, and Jeremy Olivier for Taiwan Plus. Hi, welcome to Didn't Make the Cut. I'm your host, Eric Tsai. Today, we're going to be sitting down with Jeremy to talk about the Formosa incident, an incident that's pivotal to Taiwan's progression towards democracy. Jeremy, thanks for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, Eric. With the news, you know, we're also dealing with like um, a little bit shorter. There's some things that were missing that were kind of had to be left out, sort of say. Like during the research, you know, did you find anything new that you thought was interesting? I mean, you knew about it before, but like, were there anything that you're like, oh, like, I really want to do this. It's like, it's, it's fun and it's interesting, but nope, just not going to make the cut. The several, like the week or so leading up to the protest, there were a number of things that happened, you know, um, the, the Formosa Magazine's offices were raided, you know, um, some of the leading staff were beaten. Yeah. Um, I, I believe like the, the office in Pingdong was, um, was, um, you know, uh, uh, not raided, but like basically roughed up by, um, what they believe are gangsters, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Organized crime. So um, there's a lot of context that had to be dropped. The basic idea was to give, you know, people that might not be familiar with this incident, um, you know, uh, an introduction, a at least something to go on so that yeah. they could go and, you know, watch your, you know, <laughs> longer form documentary yeah. um, or to go and do their own I mean, research. even even mine, it's, I would say <laughs> it's, again, still like a one-on-one sort of say. Right. I mean, we had a, we had Linda in and she was like, I was like, oh, I want to talk to you about, you know, the Formosa incident. She goes like, how deep do you want me to go? Like, I can go like deep. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I still can't go that deep. Do you think something like Formosa incident could have been, could have been, avoided or like maybe it didn't need to be avoided or this is this thing was bound to happen this day or another day do you do you have that feeling so i think at that point i don't think it could have been prevented i think that you know the dong wai the political opposition at that point had snowballed to the extent that if there had been a resumption of the elections they would have they would have just trounced the KMT at that point, um, and so, you know, John Jingwo was probably right that, you know, this this cutting of of ties uh, between the U.S. and Taiwan was probably you know, it, it 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 could have been the end of the KMT if they had moved closer towards you know kind of a electoral democracy, um, and in the end, I think that you know. Yes, if, if the incident hadn't happened and if they'd continued with uh, some sort of, you know, um, gradual, you know, incremental move towards, um, you know, national elections, yeah. um, you know, that, uh, that, you know, it could have been a similar transition. But, um, you know, this incident really catalyzed the whole process and you know the people that were you know the leading staff of the magazine these are the people that went on to become you know the the ruling sure. democratic yep. progressive party's first generation of leadership and they're still around i mean tanju she's the control UN head mm-hmm. right so um you know these people really had um they were committed yep. um they were committed democracy activists and um for them, I think there was no turning back either way. Uh, so uh, I think it would have been it would have been this or something else. It would have been this or something else. And this this you know, I think you know, luckily for everyone, because not only Taiwanese people but the people that come to visit Taiwan get to enjoy this very you know vibrant, uh, some might say chaotic and crazy <laughs> democracy. Um, because of that, because of the sacrifices they made, you know, following this this incident. Um, I think Taiwan uh, is it's for the better, right? Coming up in March, maybe we'll maybe it's you, maybe we'll both do another report on the Wild Lily movement because I think that's another thing that is was pivotal and I think even less talked about uh, compared to the Formosa incident and two two eight even. Absolutely, yeah. So, Look forward to that. <laughs> yeah. So, well, thank you for coming on, and you know, thank you for watching. Didn't make the cut. And hopefully, next time we can see more things that didn't make the cut. See you around.
Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>